Thank you very much, Martin. And it's a pleasure to uh, talk about one of my books uh, today. And I am an author and I like writing books about uh, nature and I use animals like uh, native uh, people do. I wrote one about a wolf, a uh, bullfrog, uh, dragonfly, turtle, and many other animals. I, I like to put animals in stories because uh, uh, students can relate to animals really well and they like animals and it makes them more excited. My very first book was uh, called That Chickadee Feeling. And uh, I, I, this sort of happened by an accident because uh, everybody wonders, how'd you get the idea for that story? Well, the way I got the idea for the story was I was uh, walking in the woods one day and all of a sudden, boom, this little chickadee comes right up and lands on me and uh, it was looking for food. And I wondered, why would that little chickadee land on me? Why would it trust it, uh, me with its life? Like I could pull his tail off or crush it or whatever. Of course, I wouldn't do that. But I thought, this thing trusted me with its life. That's really awesome. And I got this wonderful feeling come all over me that I called a chickadee feeling. And that's how I got the idea for the story. Because chickadees are really, really uh, neat to me. And I like their calls. And all the birds think uh, this guy's saying cheeseburger. But uh, the girls don't think that. The girls always think he's saying, hi, sweetie. But uh, you can hear them for many, many uh, meters off singing that song. That's sort of like their mating call there. And uh, when I first wrote the book, it... Uh, it was a little uh, different in format. I've revised it uh, five times, so there's thousands and thousands of copies of it. That was the first one. <clears throat> it was translated into French and uh, in, uh, about five other languages, and I ended up uh, with this last version that I'm going to share with you. So that's sort of a little bit of the history about uh, the book. And uh, when I open it here, I always like leaving messages. And it says, it is an ancient belief that the divine forces talk to us through the natural world. And that was written by uh, a native person, Ted Andrews. And let nature be your teacher, because that's what this book is for. It's an invitation. You read the book, and then it's an invitation for you to go out and do it. You go out and feed the chickadees. <clears throat> the book's all about somebody who's in their house and they're really, really bored. And I don't know whether it's a boy or a girl. And I told the, uh, the illustrators, don't let them know whether it's a boy or a girl. It's because I think uh, I like writing books for both. So here's this kid sitting at home. <clears throat> I was bored, really, 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 really bored. My toys were boring. Television was boring. Video games were boring. Can you imagine that? Everything was boring. So he does look very bored or she looks very bored. Even my sleeping dog, Max, was boring. I needed something exciting to do. And there's old Max just sleeping. He's kind of bored too. So what does he do? He's got this problem. He goes to his mother. My mother was busy writing a letter, so I didn't want to disturb her. I had to think of a way to get her attention. I put on my most boring face and spoke to her in my most boring voice. Mom, I'm bored. I'm really, really bored. What can I do? Well, mom doesn't know what to do for a while. So mom looks at me for a long time over the top of her glasses. Then to my surprise, she said, I know just what you need. You need that chickadee feeling. Well, I didn't know what she meant by a chickadee feeling, but I was ready to try anything. Before I knew it, I was dressed in my coat, my scarf, my boots, and my hat, and heading towards the park with a small bag in my hand. And look at that dog. He's really happy to go out for a walk, too. As we arrived at the edge of the forest, we were greeted by the warning sound of the screaming blue jay. I heard other bird sounds in the background, so there were lots of birds there besides the chickadee. My mother explained to me how all the land around here used to be a good home for many animals. Now all that was left was a small park that a few good people had saved. 
And I'm glad they saved that park so the city kids can go out and feed chickadees. I wondered what all this had to do with me being bored and what this special chickadee feeling was all about. So he's wondering, why has mom got me out here? But the dog still loves it. All of a sudden, my mother stopped and whispered, we're here. I looked all around, but all I saw were bushes and small trees. I heard strange fluttering noises that seemed to be getting closer and louder, but still, I could see no signs of life. My mother told me to be patient she, uh, as she took some sunflower seeds out of a small bag. She told me to hold out my open hand and to be very, very still while she sprays the seeds gently on my bare palm. So the kid still doesn't know why he's getting chickadee or sunflower seeds on his hand. But someone else did. I stood there for a long time. Then suddenly I heard the soft, gentle sounds of tiny wings very close to us. A curious little chickadee landed beside me on the branch of a dogwood shrub where it watched me carefully. And it would be saying in his head, can I trust this person if I land on their hand? Will they hurt me? Will they crush me? I don't know. I better size them up first. It sang its song. Chickadee dee dee, chickadee dee dee, chickadee dee dee. It moved his head nervously from side to side. It hopped through the bushes toward me. I stood as still as a bird feeder. And that's what you are, a human bird feeder. The tiny chickadee hopped cautiously closer. I was excited. It looked at the seeds. It looked at me. Our eyes seemed to lock onto each other. Then it happened. That trusting little bird landed on my hand. I got a strange tingling feeling which stretched from my fingers to the tips of my toes. I was surprised and excited at the very same time. A big wave of happiness ran over me. It felt as if Mother Nature had touched me. It was magical. This must have been what my mother was talking about. This must be that special chickadee feeling. I wondered how this little bird could make me feel so amazing and cheerful. The little chickadee chose one seed from my hand and pl placed the seed between his tiny feet. It, it uh, pecked hungrily at the outer shell to find a tender inner part, which it ate quickly because it was very hungry. I heard other chickadee dee sounds, but that same little chickadee flew right back to my his shaking hand for more food. And again, I got that same warm, wonderful chickadee feeling. It was awesome. The little chick, well, <laughs> to my surprise, I forgot my mother was even with me. When I looked at her, we both glowed with big beaming smiles. At that special moment, I felt a different chickadee feeling. That day, I learned I could have a chickadee feeling even without the chickadee. And that is very strange, having a chickadee feeling without a chickadee. As we walked home, Mom and I talked about other exciting chickadee feelings we both have had in our lives. Mom told me about the first time she learned to ride her bike, she got a chickadee feeling. And when she came first in a race, and got that blue ribbon, she got a chickadee feeling. And I told her about uh, when we got a, a, a little dog, my first puppy, I got a chickadee feeling. And the first time I saw a rainbow, I got a chickadee feeling. So these were all chickadee feelings without the chickadees. But the best part of all was when my mom told me that her very, 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 very best chickadee feeling was the first time she saw me on the day I was born. I sure wasn't bored anymore. And because his mom told him that, he wasn't bored anymore and thought that was a really wonderful feeling. And that's the end of my story. I hope you liked it. And there are a few things you can do uh, with this story. And uh, for lower grades, this is a grade one book. Because once you read that story, it sort of begs the question, what is a chickadee feeling? Well, you know, it's a happy, warm, wonderful, exciting feeling that you get when you feed a chickadee out of your hand. But you can get the chickadee feeling other ways, too. 
So I asked the grade ones, I said, what, if, what if, have you ever had a chickadee feeling? What was your best chickadee feeling you've had? And they made a whole book of them for me. And you could do this too at home. And it says, I met my I, first snowy owl. So this kid in grade one saw first, the first time he saw a snowy owl, he got a chickadee feeling. So those were wonderful chickadee feelings. And here this girl, she says, my best chickadee feeling was when my baby brother and baby sister were born. So that was their very, very, very best chickadee feeling. So I love seeing all these chickadee feelings because I got chickadee feelings when I saw these too. And these people here said, when I got my dog Diesel, so all these kids are, are, are a family, and when they got their dog Diesel, that was their very, very best chickadee feeling. And grade fours wrote a book too. It can, can be any grade, but the, the chickadee feelings got a little different. And oh, when these, these people got three dogs, and look at this as a boy, when he scored a goal in a shootout. Wow, that's a really good chickadee feeling. So everybody gets different chickadee feelings, and it's really neat to make a whole book of it. And you at home could even make a family book, my family book of chickadee feelings. <clears throat> and if you wanted to do something really special, you could do this. You could make your own chickadee. And here's a sheet of paper that you need. And what you do is you fold the sheet of paper in half. And um, you have to cut it out. But do not cut here or here. These two places you don't cut. And once it's all cut out, it'll look like this. And remember, it isn't cut in these two places. So then you can color the chickadee. And here's one all colored and ready to go. But the neat thing about this is it really turns into a chickadee for you. All you do is spread the wings on it and grab them by the tail in here and pull this up over the body and head and place it on the top and you got your own chickadee. But what's really neat about it is you can put my best chickadee feeling, my best chickadee feeling in life so far is here. And my second best chickadee feeling is down here. So then you've got it captured right in the chickadee, your chickadee feelings that you can have. You could even hang it up in your room if you'd like. But chickadee feelings are really, really uh, are neat. And what I always encourage uh, people to do is to be chickadee people. And a chickadee person is a person who gives other people chickadee feelings, because that's what a real chickadee uh, person does. And how would you, uh, how could you give another person chickadee feelings? Well, how could you make people in your family happy? What could you do to your brother, sister, mother, dad to give them a chickadee feeling? Because then you truly are a chickadee person. And, uh, that was a whole purpose for writing this book is to make people help other people and get chickadee feelings. And uh, my wish to you is may your life be full of chickadee feelings. Thank you. Hello. Actually, thank you very much. I would like to thank Mr. Frank Glue for his very entertaining and very generous presentation. I hope kids at home will enjoy this presentation as much as I did. Uh, if you want to send your chickadee feel illustrated chickadee feed to Mr. Uh, Frank Glue, you may actually send it through you uh, through Facebook. Uh, make a picture of it, uh, make a, a photo, or uh, scan it if you can. Uh, send us, uh, send, send this to us, send this to us through Facebook, and we'll make sure to uh, to, uh, to show it to Mr. Glue. So thank you very much, Mr. Glue. And as I was reading the story, uh, chickadees landed in my backyard oh. and on my bird feeder. Wow. <laughs> so I think they wanted to hear that story. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Frank Lou was born in Clinton, Ontario, Canada. He is the fourth oldest of seven children. Frank grew in a family with lots of love but little of money. During, this, during his childhood, he developed a keen, of, keen love of nature, farming, and sports. He has taught in Tillensburg, Tor Toronto, Kitchener, Waterloo, and Melbourne, Australia, and University of Waterloo. 
Frank has taught at all grade levels of education from grade one to university. In his 35 years of teaching, he has held the role of teacher, vice principal, principal consultant, coordinator, and university professor. He believes in the holistic, integrated, and active student-centered approach to learning. He has practiced these beliefs throughout his career. Frank has written 11 children's book, picture books and is the recipient of 14 awards for his work in environmental ed education. The author has donated more than 700,000 worth of books to needy Ontario schools from Windsor to o Ottawa. Frank has been a keynote speaker at many national and international conferences. He presents 40 to 50 workshops a year to students prom promoting literacy and environmental science education. His main thrust now is presenting his picture books to, to students in their own school library and spending as much time as possible with his grandchildren.